hello everybody welcome again so to move further we have uh, um, ANI Gurugram here with us today and they'll be having a panel discussion on the topic how to enhance retrospective effectiveness uh, Anamika is the moderator thank you so much Anamika and uh, over to you now and uh, one a little bit of input um, I would request all the attendees to please post their questions in the chat box thank you all right Anamika over to you yeah Thank you. Thank you very much, Shreya. Hi. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Anamika. And as Shreya mentioned, uh, I'll be the moderator for today's event. Um, so let's first start with the, uh, a quick round of introduction from uh, myself as well as from the panelists. So uh, let me begin with myself. So my name is Anamika Shukla, and uh, I'm working with IBM as an SLA manager uh, from the last uh, more than 12 years, I guess. And I am a project management professional with uh, experience on uh, data analyst, uh, SLA management, service now, uh, client governance, and many more areas related to operations and project management. So this is uh, just a brief summary about myself. Now I would like to welcome my um, co-panelists. So we have uh, an amazing set of panelists today with us, uh, amazing personalities from different uh, domains who bring rich experience with them and have done remarkably well in their uh, professions. Uh, so I welcome all three of you on behalf of uh, ANI. And with this, I would like to invite our first panelist, Mr. Dheeraj Bhatia. Uh, Dheeraj, over to you. Yeah, thanks, Anamika. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's uh, Dheeraj Bhatia. Uh, I am uh, working into the computer field, computer education field for the past 30 years. Uh, started my career as a computer teacher and then founded KEPS uh, as a computer education house. And later on, we ventured into the field of publishing of school computer books and uh, digital interactive tools and slowly we became India's uh, leading school computer books company. Last year I divested my equity and now I am more uh, into investing in startups and some financial and real estate investments. So um, I welcome everyone and look forward to having a good session. Thank you so much, Dheera. It is lovely having you here with us uh, so that we can learn from uh, your experience and your stories. Thank you. So next, I would like to uh, pass the talking stick to Vineet. We have Vineet Bhargav with us. Yeah, hi. Thank you, Anamika. And uh, good morning, everybody. Um, you know, it's been uh, over uh, 18 years, uh, you know, within uh, I worked into the IT industry, worked with, uh, you know, uh, companies, consulting companies uh, in my journey. And, uh, you know, then uh, after working for 17 years, get, got into the entrepreneurship role, um, started my, mm -hmm. uh, you know, co-founded basically a company uh, which was into the conversational AI space. And uh, now getting into the tech consulting space, um, I'm also... You know, an investor in um, looking for investment opportunities for uh, startup organizations as well. And uh, yeah, uh, that's it. Thank you very much. And looking forward for a wonderful uh, discussion today with, uh, uh, you know, some of the esteemed panelists. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vineet. Uh, and uh, I'm sure we're going to learn a lot of from you as well as a startup advisor and especially the Jaguar specialist. That's that's something I liked a lot. And um, we all Indians like that word Jaguar a lot. So thank you very much for bringing in that experience as well. Okay, so last but not the least, uh, I would li now like to pass the talking stick to Vatsalya. Vatsalya. Hi everyone, good morning. Yeah, hi everyone. Thanks Anamika. So hi, this is Vatsalya. Been in industry for 22 plus years. I currently work as a senior director of product engineering with a consulting organization called Incido. I have a good experience working with large scale teams and small startups. So that's the uh, experience that I like to share with this forum. And there'll be pretty good insights on how, like as the topic suggests, so it'll be good learning for all of us. I'll share my experience and probably learn from my fellow esteemed panelists. So I think it will be a great journey. Thank you. 
Thank you so much, Vatsalya. We would definitely like to um, learn from your experience as well. So great. Thank you all of you once again uh, for joining us today. And now let's start uh, with our today's discussion. OK. So as we all know, we have a very interesting topic today, which is uh, how to enhance retrospectives uh, effectiveness, basically. So uh, retrospectives, as we all know, is a reflection of how we have performed in the last cycle of uh, our work. What went well, what did not go well, what are the corrective actions that we are we need to take now to get back onto the track and uh, to bring on some improvements in our um, uh, journey uh, going forward. And retrospectives are as uh, we all are aware that it is one of the most uh, commonly used practice in these days in all the enterprises. And not only in IT, uh, but they are quite popular in other uh, domains as well, like sales, operations, customer service, uh, and uh, even in product engineering and manufacturing. In fact, they were being used in many of the domains even before uh, Agile uh, came into existence. And um, I would also mention that uh, retrospective actually is a part of our daily lives as well, be it our routine health checkups or the midterm exams of our children. It is an important aspect of our lives. Uh, I hope you all agree with me. Uh, bring forward the insights and perspectives uh, from IT as well as uh, other industry professionals that we have with us here. And uh, with this, uh, I would like to just mention there is a saying in Agile Alliance uh, blogs that I read um, recently. Uh, it says, become more like scientists and less like detectives in your retrospectives. So let's take off our uh, detective hats for now and wear scientist coats and try to discover new stuff and learn from the experience of our esteemed uh, panelists today. Okay, so with this, uh, let's start the interesting discussion. And uh, for uh, uh, to begin with, I would first like to understand um, how these people are performing retrospectives in their different domains. So uh, I would like to ask Dheeraj. Um, Dheeraj comes from a rich education coaching background. Uh, I don't know how many how many thousands of uh, students he has. Uh, already uh, prepared and uh, I also know a couple of them. So welcome Dheeraj again. And um, so Dheeraj, please tell us about uh, your experience uh, and uh, let us know how do you uh, perform retrospectives in your organization or in your domain? What approach yeah. do you follow? <clears throat> Thank you, Anamika. And as, as you rightly said that uh, the retrospective, the first retrospective begins with the self. Unless uh, we have a good retrospective for the self, we can't apply the same into any organization, any team as well. And I think this Corona times has given plenty of uh, retrospective to everyone that what exactly the life stands for and how we can make it more meaningful, more balanced over there. And as you were talking over there, that uh, retrospective means uh, it's a combination of uh, science and yeah. art. What I say is that for retrospective, uh, you need to have a microscope as well as a telescope. Microscope for the current objectives and uh, telescope for the larger objectives so that the larger objectives are not lost over there. In our publishing uh, uh, domain, primarily we used to have uh, you know, retrospectives across multiple domains and uh, monthly retrospectives across different domains and then quarterly retrospective along the teams. For example, the sales, they used to have every month of uh, retrospective meetings over there that how exactly they are doing, what are the targets, what are the things to be done over there. Similarly, for editing or editing the content development, where again, the books, they all, they have to be ready within a limited time. So that is how the things they used to move over there. And again, when uh, the retrospective, the key thing which uh, we used to have was openness, openness to ideas, openness to criticism. We always, uh, you know, like we have that uh, uh, Mahatma Gandhi's uh, three bandhars. So we used to have the reverse philosophy that, okay, 
listen, see, and do all the evils over there, but without any personal criticism and without any personal evaluation targets. That's how we used to see, and that's how as a team also we used to work over there. And uh, like you said over there, Anamika, you, that retrospective was primarily used as a tool in agile computing. But uh, I think uh, retrospective is a wonderful tool for making the organization, any organization, agile. Any organization with a good growth mindset needs to have retrospectives at different levels so that it stays agile and on growth path. Thank you. Thank you, Dheeraj. Very well said. Uh, and uh, I am I am sure that uh, all these all these tips and experiences that you are sharing it is going to be very helpful for all of us. So uh, I would like to ask the same question to Vatsalya as well. Vatsalya, how do you guys uh, perform retrospectives, uh, being in a product company, and uh, uh, what approach uh, you guys follow? So, <clears throat> Anamika, so uh, in a product engineering, we generally follow the agile as most of our people would be doing. We understand a lot of sprint movement. So two weeks of sprints, it's a lot of like fast paced action on the floor. So when we get into retrospectives, my my methodologies, we generally don't do it on the floor. We take a chill out. We go to a place which is more calm, relaxed, something like a quiet place, something like a cafeteria or where you can unwind yourself. And we just get a cup of coffee with each other, tea, coffee, whatever works. And then we sit back and then we say, hey, how did we do? So that one, it takes off the all the nitty gritties of things that the team is doing. It gives them a holistic view. They can think logically. They can think practically. And that also enables them, as uh, our fellow panelists said, they too, we as a teamwork, they understand, oh, this is something we did well. We'll maintain that. But they also it also adds a humbleness to them to accept mistakes. So if I'm part of that team and I didn't do well, I'll not hesitate to say, okay, this is an area of improvement. Let's do that. So that learning from self to team, and even it helps the teams transform uh, to learn from their mistakes. And when they meet next time, like it's a, definitely a motivation for them to perform better. So that has helped very well for me. Thank you. Thank you, Asalya. Uh, yes, actually, that is a very good uh, good point that um, bringing these uh, retrospectives uh, in front of everybody uh, in a more casual way rather than uh, getting into a meeting room and uh, let everybody feel uncomfortable. So that is that is very good point that you've um, taken up. OK, uh, so uh, moving on, um, I would like to ask Vineet. Uh, Vineet has a good uh, background of um, IT as well as consulting. Uh, Vineet, do you really think that retrospectives bring uh, good value to your business? Does it really uh, help in increasing your business or achieving targets more efficiently? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, if you look at it, uh, retrospectives, uh, you know, uh, I, I remember one of the statements by one of my team members uh, saying that, you know what, uh, retrospectives are just used so that we, you can find out our mistakes and uh, use that in the in the performance appraisal, you know. And uh, so I, I kind of, you know, took that. And, and basically what we started to speak about is that retrospective is not just, and, you know, within the team, what we used to do is we used to do the retrospective even with the business as well, you know, sometimes, you know, with our real customers. And we used to ask them, you know, what went well? How do they see, you know, uh, the value coming out? And believe me, when when we started to engage our team members into the business discussion, in, into the discussions with the business, one of the one of the parameters that came out is team members started to suggest ideas to the business that okay, how can they be more you know, optimized? How can they be more effective? How can they be more productive? And those ideas were converted into features and user stories later on. That's the value that the retrospectives actually brought you know, in my experience. Uh, working with you know the large scale teams as well, and eventually working with the small scale teams as well. The second factor, what, what I noticed was that when these retrospectives were done along with team and along with the business as well, it really helped increase the customer confidence on the team as well um uh, you know because what they started to see is the value 
that is coming out and the value was measured very specifically in terms of the business growth we we put that as a value parameter into our own success uh, stories and uh, i think that's where that's where i see that retrospectives were adding a lot of value second thing i think it's is another factor is uh, rolling the uh, you know basically talking about the roles that you play so one of the factors that we did also is we reverse the roles of facilitators within the retrospectives so it was not always one person performing that role that role was rotated so that everybody gets that feel and uh, you know get a, get a chance to wear multiple hats so that you know you could think from from a perspective of the other person so i think a pause over here and uh, look for other panelists to see their views yes absolutely vinith very well said uh, the facilitator plays a very important role in uh, retrospectives uh, uh, so uh, it is basically uh, um, uh, it is basically uh, it brings in uh, the um, uh, the uh, safe environment and uh, the uh, confidence in other people as well when they take a turn and become the um, retrospective uh, a facilitator, I mean. Yeah. So good. Uh, okay. So moving on, um, I would like to now bring uh, invite again uh, Dheeraj, and I would like to understand from him. Uh, if uh, Dheeraj, uh, please tell us from your experience if you have any, you have faced any bottlenecks uh, in your uh, uh, in your organization or in your work, where uh, you think uh, uh, this retrospectives have played a major role in uh, solving the issue or bringing out the performance into a next level. Any success stories that you would like to share with us? Yeah, definitely. Before that, uh, uh, I would like to compliment Vineet uh, because normally the retrospective, they are held uh, within the organization. And uh, like Vineet said that that you they used to have uh, a mm -hmm. retrospective. Uh, I, I think it must be some innovative way with their customers also. So that's a wonderful way because end of the day, we are all working for our customers. And many a time we may not give exactly the kind of importance which a customer desires. So that's a very wonderful takeaway. And I request uh, all the members who are over here to take a note of this. This is a very, very important thing. Coming over here, yes, we used to have so many bottlenecks and uh, like for example, we were working with our authors and uh, graphic designers on different projects. And we used to have a little unorganized way of working that uh, you know the authors are writing the graphic designers are working on that and so many times the things were happening that the same file used to happen over there then in between we had a person who was from an it background and he started writing our books for senior sections he was uh, ex tcs and now settled in uh, uk so he then gave us a different software that okay let's have this complete software in which all the book automation step by step chapter first edition second edition which thing everything was logged over there but at the same time the challenge was that our team was not used to working in that kind of thing so that is where the thing was there but slowly it happened and it really you know transformed the way we were doing from an unorganized way to a highly organized way had it not been for retrospective meeting where we were talking that where you know where the flaws were there because time and again the books edition and all we were missing the deadlines and end of the day in retrospective yes we say that you know time and again that uh, the efficiency the results versus the outcome may not match it may not be that the results divided by the outcome desired may not be 100 percent but if the same trend persists then the meanings of retrospective also misses you know mistakes doing mistakes is good but not learning from the mistakes is bad so that is where the retrospectives they helped us and had it not been for retrospective we may have been lagging lagging and lagging over there thank you right beautifully explained Thiraj. thank you so much and uh, i would like to ask uh, vatsalya on also the same um, uh, question what is your view on this vatsalya any success stories that you would like to share with us 
Yeah, um, so I think that's a very interesting point, Namika. So I have I'll talk about two examples, not uh, too long. <clears throat> so one of my engineering teams were facing a lot of challenges in the technical perspective, how things communicate, what the performance issues. So things were moving not what we wanted. When we're doing a retrospection, we, we have a tendency of getting in young crowd. So there was a fresher who joined six months back. And when we were debating and discussing the most complex problem, that guy stood up and said, may I ask, may I answer that? And we said, okay, go ahead. And he provided a very simple, very beautiful and very effective solution, which at the first go, everybody resisted, oh, this won't work. But then after five minutes, we all realized that the solution he provided was exactly what we should have done. Interestingly, his experience of six months versus his experience of eight to 10 years was a big uh, mismatch. But we incorporated that and we solved one of the most complex problems. So our learning from retrospective is not the experience or the maturity. It's just an innovation or an idea that can be sparked from anyone in the team, be it the junior most, be it the senior most. And secondly, like Vinit also talked about when we get into discussions with external stakeholders. So we had stakeholders, one, we work with global customers. So their perception about India, the teams, the cultural alignment is different. So what is easy for us is like Indian culture, like we are not used to saying no. We don't deny things. We accept things. We are not very vocal. So when we get into a discussion in a retrospect, they figured out, oh, these guys are actually vocal. They do speak a lot. So at that also engaged one of one of the key stakeholders. He was very reticent. He used to be a lot of critic for our teams. And in two or three retrospectives, it turned out he was a senior stakeholder at the customer side. He turned out to be the biggest champion of our teams. And that turned the things around like anything. He knew our teams well. He came to India for a visit. And you won't believe for seven days, he got home cooked food from all the team members. And now he's a champion of the Indian teams there. And we interestingly for that, uh, that's a product organization, Umbrella Gumbi, we started a journey with like two product lines of theirs. In six months, we are working on 12 product lines of theirs. So that's a huge compliment. And we've been told as a success story in that organization, based of the US. Like this is how global teams work. Initially, we were supposed to be vendors in technology when we say we work for them. Now they are coming up to us, hey guys, can you help us solve this problem? Can you help architect this solution? So now we have become the center, the R&D center of them. Though they have spread worldwide, they have a team size of what, 25,000 people worldwide. But now it's like the team feels, there's a lot of pride this team has. And this team is one of the flagship teams in, our, in, in, an, in an organization. This looked as a role model. So I think the people engagement, the connect, the customer engagement, everything falls in place and it's more of a very well uh, balanced equilibrium that we do. Right, absolutely. That was a very uh, beautiful story that you've uh, shared with us. And uh, of course, uh, there are great learnings from all these stories. Okay, uh, so um, I have a question uh, in the chat that I would like to take up right now uh, before moving ahead. Uh, so uh, Anmol is asking, do you think everyone has a fair opportunity to speak during retrospectives or just to select, just to select a few higher power positions uh, within the team um, which are uh, get heard usually? So uh, Vineet, would you like to start? Yeah, I would, I would, I would actually pick it up. Um, you know what, I actually touched briefly upon uh, for, for answering this question during my, when I was talking about the business value piece. Uh, see, if you look at it, uh, one of the things that I, I mean, one of the best practices that I followed was that during the retrospectives, we kept on changing the roles. You know, somebody was a scribe, somebody was a facilitator. So if in a fortnight we had one person doing that role, the next fortnight that person would eventually change. You know, and that really helps the team to get to understand what that role demands. So if I'm a facilitator, I need to make sure that everybody in the team participates. If I'm not able to do so, that means that I have to build, develop those skills. And we used to mentor those people, right? So I'm just reading that question again. Do you think everybody has a everyone has a fair opportunity to speak during retrospective? The way I I understand people don't speak. It is not that they don't get fair uh opportunity it's it's and this is one of the challenges that i noticed people don't yeah. speak you know yeah and uh, when you 
give them the roles, you empower them to wear those hats. And my recommendation would be that if, if in in one of the retrospectives, you know that, thing, my recommendation is try that. You will see people start to speak because now they understand the challenges that the other person is having, right? Yeah, yes, that's my new thing. Yes, absolutely, Vinny. That's that's actually a very good uh, way to uh, uh, involve everybody and um, make everybody uh, speak and take the stage uh, on their own shoulders and take the lead, basically. So they also feel important uh, in that way, right? Absolutely. Um, so, uh, Dheeraj, um, please tell us, uh, have you faced any challenges in running smooth uh, retrospectives like the one we've just discussed? Any other uh, challenges you may have faced and how you overcame those? Um, Adhira, you're on mute. Yeah, and like Vineet rightly said that uh, one of the better ways is that, yes, uh, we are having a rotation of facilitators. I think uh, this is the best way of having agile retrospectives so that everyone is uh, moving and working over there. The challenges, as Vineet once again has said that, yes, uh, that uh, number one part is that not many people, they come with their own views. Definitely that is going to be there, but that is where uh, the role of the facilitator, the role of the leader comes, that how he plans the retrospective. Because like we are planning all the sprints, all the working, so same way the retrospectives, they have to be planned properly. You may heard, uh, you may have heard about that story that uh, eight or nine blind people, they were brought uh, near an elephant and uh, they all were touching the elephant and everyone had a different perspective. So end of the day, yes, they are having, everyone is having different perspectives and they become blind because they are blind. But in an organization, the people are not blind. They are having their own angles. So main thing is that how we synchronize all their angles into a common objective and try to achieve a better way of working. And that is where, again, when the interdepartmental uh, retrospectives were happening, Sometimes we used to have out of the box ideas also. We were in productions and they used to have fixed mind that angle or they were blind to other things. They were working in the same way and they say, oh, we are getting stuck up over there. And sometimes a person from a other department may give a certain idea which may not look that practical. But once they start, because end of the day, people resist change also. Sometimes our egos, they also come. Oh, why he has said this? This is my department and this. But end of the day, the next retrospective, we found that the person was thinking that, yes, we implemented that. And that is what happening over there. The most uh, common problem which was over there was the frequent uh, things which should have been solved in one retrospective and the same featuring time and again. And that is where, again, we used to have certain examples, certain theories that how we can overcome that. So that's how as a team collaboration, we used to work out. Yes, we are not working in an ideal scenario, but that is where the difference comes from being good to being great. So if you want to achieve greatness, you have to step out and create some dynamic steps. And that is the purpose of these retrospectives. Thank you. Absolutely, Dheeraj. Uh, thank you so much for these insights. So I want I want to ask Vatsalya also. Vatsalya, what kind of challenges have you faced during retrospectives? Any kind of biasness or people uh, taking things personally or uh, something like that uh, if you have faced? Yeah, Ramika, I think that's a very interesting point. So first of all, my thought is it's easy for people. It's very difficult for people to accept mistakes speed self and more more challenging is to call out problems of the other people if i know someone it will be if I, if i'm i'm allied to someone it will be i don't want to call his or her mistakes in the forum and if i don't like anyone in the team i'll be the most loudest voice heard that oh we need to fix this so that's a big challenge so people interaction engagement as team is very very important so the whole motto changes from I to V when we do a retrospection. It is not about what I did, it's about what we did. And the motto by which I live with my teams is teamwork. So it's nothing like 
whatever we will either we succeed or we fail so first of all that amalgamation of being together whatever wins is ours whatever loses ours so that erases the fear and the doubt that you may this is my mistake so it becomes our mistake and then people open up and and then they'll be very very humble in accepting oh i did this wrong because if, if you start something oh you you did it wrong he or she will come back very heavily oh this is there'll be a number of excuses so first of all that feeling to say okay that acceptance of bringing the issues or the areas of improvement on the table is the first important thing because if that path is done i think it's 60 to 70 percent we are almost done then it's just a fixing of the problem and my thought is once the teams are bonded they are amalgamated as one unit then the rest 30 percent goes off in a wave like it, it's 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 not an effort it's only getting the minds thought getting them together as a team is what i think is the most difficult task and i have had teams like to be candid i have very very junior teams who have done fantastically well with customers they scaled mountains just because they worked as a team they is no individual heroics when we talk about engineering or products all about teamwork so everybody complements each other and then they take challenges as in go and have been able to enable a lot of teams they are on their go they're working fantastically well and they gel well they know where the gaps are what are what are the skills they complement each other and that's the whole game then the, then things are like on their own we, we can scale things faster Absolutely. Okay. Uh, very nice. Uh, very nice. Uh, yes, Vinay, yeah. please. I just wanted to share one thing because I don't want to in the question by Amol is that just to select few with higher power positions within the team that heard. I don't know whether we address this or not. But I just want to share one thing that reminded me of one example. We, we, I had a similar situation uh, because it was a large scale team actually. We were doing multiple retrospectives and we had a similar challenge. People coming and saying that whatever we say it's not accepted you know so one of, one of the thing that uh, i implemented in uh, in those teams is we asked some of my my peers to come as moderators in those retrospectors so i implemented that practice and that moderator basically used to then publish the takeaways out of the discussion and you know uh, sort of observe and suggest any further changes that has to be done and actually that moderation concept actually worked very well for us wherein people then started to understand that though it's not one individual or one facilitator who's you know really driving those inputs it's basically a moderator who's coming with an independent mindset is basically giving that uh, you know uh, you know the final sort of approval or whatever way you want to you know moderate it but the whole idea was that to bring an independent party into the discussion uh, and that really helped and that will only be that was we did this. We did this only with a certain team because we see some interpersonal issues within those teams. So we did not do it for, you know, all the teams. But in certain areas, you can apply that as well. That that might help. Yes, Vinit, absolutely. Uh, that's a right point. If there is uh, there is something which is bothering the team uh, in relation to biasness or people think that uh, they are not getting uh, heard. Uh, properly so yes that is i think uh, that can play a, a very uh, important role in bringing uh, somebody who has a fresh mindset with a with a different perspective uh, uh, from external uh, teams as well and uh, that can definitely bring uh, this particular challenge out of the team so thank you so much vinita and thanks thank you vatsalya once again Okay, uh, with this, I have one question um, uh, from R.C. Goyal. Uh, he wants to know what is the maximum size of audience uh, that, uh, in order to ena enable active participation in the retrospect. So, um, Dheeraj, would you like to uh, answer this? Hardly speaking, uh, it depends on the, uh, primarily it's the team which is working on the project. And uh, I believe that uh, all these stakeholders should be involved. And uh, like we used to do that, we used to have a multi-department, but every department is interdependent on other. Production has no roles in sales, but sales is dependent on production. And end of the day, again, that the, if the sales is not happening, what the production department will do. So we used to have monthly meetings as far as the individual departments were concerned. And within that, we used to have smaller uh you know modules like say north south west and all for sales and but for production and all it has to be over there and then quarterly meetings and annual meetings wherein 
all they used to be over there. Because end of the day, like uh, the question was there, that the meeting, the purpose of the meeting is lost if all these stakeholders, they don't uh, get the chance to speak also. Right. Uh, what's a, um, what do you have to say on this? Uh, what what do you think the maximum size of um, people participating in the retrospectives to enable it more active? So Anamika, as I think I second Dheeraj, so the people who are involved, who are participative, who understand the context, who do the people who will be the best? So it's not about one person or how many people like they should one there should be a conversion of thoughts it should not be a n to n minus one by two type of a communication so it's all the alignment of it should be conclusive to a common thought one those all people let me rephrase it all those people should be clear what's the common objective what is the definition of success for this team only then they'll be able to converge if they if they know that they have to go they have to ship this product live by this date that the alignment would should be there is they'll not be able to converge and there'll be a difference of opinions and thoughts so it's like all the people who have their hands on the deck would be the right side of audience again if the size goes beyond like like 100 150 like like we go talk about global teams 300 plus it's better to chunk out in a sizing batch of like 30 40 possibly 50 where we get meaningful discussions and then we can do a retro of retrospectives amongst those and then converge at the top three areas or the top five areas which everybody would avoid and that should be the next area of improvement for the teams. Like somebody said, I'll say point of view of the teams rather than areas of improvement. For the teams. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so point of view is uh, very much appreci appreciated uh, instead of uh, the word feedback. Uh, so which is very well said, uh, said in the chat as well. And I also like the, uh, the concept of uh, retro of the retro. So that becomes very important in um, some areas where we have to actually, we should be performing the retrospective of the retrospective itself, uh, which can bring in more value at the end. Okay, uh, Vineet, uh, would you like to share any, any um, uh, best practices or anything that uh, may have helped you? Uh, for the sizing of the retrospective? Yeah. I mean, uh, see, there's no right or wrong. Um, answer to this um, you know usually, so usually, usually how many, how many it, people are there in your retrospectives yeah so usually you have done it within the team um, you know so if i have a if i have a spin team um, you know i'll have that spin team conducting their own retrospective and then what we used to do is we used to have all the facilitators sort of um meet together and then define the action plan at a at a project level so that is how i've done it uh, typically uh, you know if you if i if i've tried making like 50 people or three sprint teams doing it together i would have done that probably in a three months window only in a, in a pi level you know at a program increment level not really at a at a sprint level retrospective now um, that's only at a PI level retrospective, that's it. Right, yeah, thank you, Vinny. Uh, so, uh, Vatsalya, uh, one question uh, that uh, with relation to the same uh, the retro of the retro that you, I think, mentioned. Uh, R.C. Goyal is asking, uh, are you referring to subject-wise retrospective? So, uh, Anamika, it's, it's more like, I'll not say subject-wise, it'll be more towards the business objective. So it's like yeah, everybody needs to do something. You mean, right? Yes, yes. And again, it is like it is not uh, dependent on the role, the position, what part of the program are you with. It could be anybody. Like all people, they could be even the smallest or the junior most to the senior most, involving stakeholders as uh, Vineet and Neeraj have been speaking on that topic as well. So it's like anybody and any uh, anybody on the floor who has contributed, who knows what is to be done, should be part of those discussions. All right. Thank you. Okay, so we have another question uh, from our audience. Um, so it is from Srijit, I think. Uh, he says, over a period of time, retrospectives uh, could become monotonous. So uh, have you got same high enthusiasm in retrospectives in a uh, long term? Vineet, what do you would like to say on this? Um, 
you know, it can be monotonous. I mean, let's be let's be fair. It yeah. and people will say that why are we meeting every fifteen days? We're doing the same thing again and again. I think the answer lies in the fact that Vasalya actually brought earlier in the discussion is let's keep this, you know, informal. Um, when it is formal, you know, people are tend to, you know, get very straight. No, I'll just speak only about one subject. The second thing is uh, one of the things that we have done in our teams, my teams especially, is that when we do the retrospective, we do not say. And this basically goes back to the previous question as well. We do not say there is a subject of this retrospective. We just gel together as a team and say, okay, what went, what really went well this fortnight for us? And then people just speak about uh, not only you know the technical things or others, they also speak about their personal things. And when you bring that personality in those discussions, then you're not talking only to your team members, you're talking to your friends also. And when you meet with your friends on a fortnightly basis, when you get a chance to talk to them in an informal manner, believe me, there will be, it'll not be monotonous as well because every time people have something different, something new in that fortnight. You know, we have celebrated uh, things during, if there is a birthday, we use the retrospective even to celebrate birthdays as well. Though yeah, it may be called, you might have said that, no, that's not the whole objective, but as a team, as a family, this is how, you know, we're going to be celebrating it together, right? It's not only about finding out issues or point of views, it's about finding success as well, right? Within those 15 days. And yes. we as a team celebrate it. So if we can bring this together, you know, uh, it'll not be one order. Say, I mean, it was yeah, not Yes, very well said, Vineet. Uh, celebrating people's success is very much important, and uh, so that people people feel important, and they they think they know that their work is getting appreciated with, uh, from uh, by everyone, and uh, they get motivation also. So, and also uh, the informal way, as what Salya and you mentioned, that is also very, uh, I think, a good point that we must note and bring into our uh, regular retrospectives. Okay, great. So we have another question from uh, Yashasvi. Uh, she's asking, as a facilitator, do you need to have good knowledge of the topic being discussed or retrospective? If no, then how the facilitator can effectively follow the technical di discussions? Uh, Dheeraj, what's your point on this? See, frankly speaking, uh, the facilitator should have the idea. Yes, yeah. may not be the technical one, but overall at a management perspective that what is the objective of this retro and what all we wish to achieve through that. So I, I believe that yes, the facilitator should have the idea, but over here, I will look forward to Vineet. That, like he said that they used to shuffle the facilitators also. So maybe we have some uh, good thing to learn from Vineet also from that. So Vineet, I think would be a better person to speak on this. Sure, I mean, um, you know, um, so when we say, see facilitator essentially is part of the team, right? I mean, it has to be part of somebody from the team itself. And, uh, you know, and if this person is part of the team, the person already knows what are the business objectives for that particular sprint. Um, you know, what are the business objectives that we are working towards? And if people don't know the business objective, that's a retro output that should come out so that people in the team should are, are aware about what are the business objectives that we are working towards. So, and every, and this is a, okay, we lost Subhira, I guess. So, but, but in a, in a bigger perspective, if you look at it, when you, when you change the facilitator roles, you're basically empowering that person to get that bigger objective. So to answer that question, yes, the facilitator should have a broader understanding of not only the technicalities of what we are working upon, but also at the same time, the business objectives. Now, if the facilitator, if I'm giving a role to a person who doesn't have that knowledge, it is an opportunity for that individual to empower himself and be ready for that role. And I also mentioned one of the points that 
as a facilitator, we also look at if there were challenges, we mentor those people as well, if you are rotating the roads. So, uh, so to answer your, to, to answer this question, I think yes, facilitators should have a broader understanding. Right. Uh, yes, Vinay, absolutely uh, uh, right and uh, very rightly explained as well. Okay, so we have uh, another question that I would like to bring across. Uh, Shantanu is asking, uh, do you bring in some data points for the retro? If you have done it, what kind of data you got in for retro? Some examples. Vatsalya, uh, would you like to share uh, your experience on this? Uh, yeah, Namika. So uh, I think data is an essential part of every analysis. Uh, we, I, I like to take this in two parts. One, when we are in an informal discussion, as we've been talking, is where the, there's a neutral place. It's all about brainstorming what things went well, what 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 are your thoughts. So that is a field connect that you're getting from the people. So when I look at data, so if my data is speaking the same thing what people are sentimenting, then it makes sense. But so data should always be there in the back to make sure that whatever analysis you're doing makes sense. But if there's a disconnect, if your data is saying, oh, your sprint velocity is going high, but the team on the ground is not motivated enough. So either the data is not correct or it's a precursor that the data for the next three sprints or four sprints will go down. So it has to be a tandem of both. And to answer the question of data being presented in sprints, I think if the discussions are in a way where the people perception is, oh, I'm doing well, the teams is doing well, but then on the ground, things are not showing up in reports, in datas. So then that has to be brought up and say, here we need guys, this is what we are doing good. This, this is coming from Jira and stuff. These are the areas where we need to do better because this is what is truncating. There's a, it generally doesn't happen that the team has a disconnect, but if there's a gap, the team will quickly reorganize and figure out, oh, maybe they're not doing something, some minor thing, which is not being done correctly, which is being reflected on the dashboards. So they, so my, my intent would be first, the team connect and informal connect would be the right mirror but it should be always uh, backed up with data to make sure that we don't lose the track on the ground. Absolutely. Thank you, Vatsalya. Okay, so uh, with this, uh, we have come to the end of this discussion. Uh, it has been a, a great discussion. So I would quickly would like to just uh, uh, show the takeaways, key takeaways from all of you that we have learned. So it's it's basically easy for people to capture. Second, sorry. Okay, so here are some of the key takeaways that I have noted, and I'm sure uh, you would all agree to this. So um, you mentioned uh, retro with the uh, clients and stakeholders, which play a very good role, important role, I would say. And then we have, um, we also have to in. Uh, include the introverts in the team and give them the stage so that they feel also important and they can also speak up. Then we have amplified the good, so which we all know. Celebrate people and their achievements, which is a very uh, important point. Rotate the retrospective facilitator, which is very, very important. And then at, and at the end, we have the retro of the retrospectives. So this is basically the key takeaways that all of us and uh, the audience can uh, take from this session. So with this, we have come to the end. So thank you, all of you. I would like to especially thank all our panelists uh, who have joined us and share their experiences, share their success stories. I'm sure um, the audience may have learned some uh, tips and tricks and uh, uh, can apply them uh, in their regular retrospectives. So thank you once again, and thank you to the audience as well uh, for keeping this interaction uh, session interactive. Hi, uh, Shreya, over to you. So thank you so much for organizing, and thank you ANI as well for bringing this platform uh, where all of us can get together and talk about uh, these interesting topics. Over to you, Shreya. Shreya, you're on mute.
<laughs> Thank you so much for the reminder. <laughs> so yeah, it, it was indeed such an interesting panel discussion, sharing your own experiences and definitely we all got to learn a lot. And uh, thank you so much for all the valuable uh, contribution that you've made today. And uh, thank you to all the participants and the attendees for uh, joining us.